Hi guys, and uh, welcome to our last art tutorial for the semester. Yay! Um, what we're going to be talking about today is your main project that you'll be starting this week. And you have about two weeks to work on this. I know on the, okay, my hair does not want to look like me. Okay. Um, as I said, you got two weeks on this. Your due date at the time when I was putting this together was like the 14th, 15th. But basically, if you can just get this to me by the 18th, which is Friday, our last day of the semester, do it, please, because I have to grade everything and get it submitted so that we can, you know, enjoy winter vacation. But yeah, so this project is called, and it's a very long title, so I apologize, is Still Life with Anogulous Colors. So. Let me explain the inogulous colors. And I know on the objective sheet, it like says it, but um, basically inogulous colors is similar, similar to monotone, but not completely true. So on your color wheel, which we did at the very beginning of the unit, inogulous means it is somewhere in the same section. So as an example, you have like red, red, orange, orange, yellow, orange that section that is considered inogulous. If you want to do cooler tones, maybe you did your green with a blue green and a blue, same thing. So um, I did put examples on your objective sheet, which again is under the main project folder with the assignment it is attached as a Word document. And we will, if we have not already gone over during our Zoom meeting, what that is. So yeah. Um, Still life. Let me bring the camera down in just a second so I can show you because I kind of went ahead and just did a still life and drew it ahead of time to save me some time. Um, I'll just get it out of my way. So I had an allergic reaction this week. I do not know what it is. Uh, I know that it's healing. I'm using medication, but unfortunately it's on my hands and you're definitely going to see it. So I'm not dying. It's not that. It's just, unfortunately, my hands are swollen. Not really sure what it is, but it's getting better. So I just don't want to get messages later and be like, oh my God, you're dying. I'm not dying. It's just, yeah, it hurts a lot. <laughs> So let me bring this camera down and kind of explain each of the steps for this project. So you. All right. So as I have on here, like I said earlier, this is a still life inogulous with colors main project. So what I did is I took several objects, arranged it, drew it out with my pencil and stuff, whatever. And once you have your still life composition set up and you have it drawn on here, what you're gonna do is something extremely, very much like similar, if not exactly like your skill builders and semi project that you've been working on. So the reason I'm saying that is because kind of like your semi project where you divided up your page with your ruler and then you drew a circle and then you had to paint each section a different color and still make this circle look like a sphere, three-dimensional, you're basically doing that here. So let me explain how this works. Once your stuff is drawn on here, what you're gonna do is just like your semi-project, you're gonna divide up your paper. And if you wanna leave it into bigger sections because that's easier for you, by God, do it. If you know that you can do all these cute little details and stuff and you want to go for it and make smaller sections, I'm not going to stop you. But I'd advise that, you know, be realistic, guys. If you know it's going to be hard for you to do a certain thing, don't, don't push it too much. I'm not going to say don't challenge yourself, you know, challenge yourself. But, yeah, I am purposely trying to avoid putting too many sections like in these overly detailed areas like these bigger flatter areas i'm fine dividing it up a little bit more it's not a big deal to me so you get that yeah i think i'm yeah that's pretty good so let me get this a little closer so you can see what's going on so on your watercolor paper once you have your still life drawn out 
um, you need to go through and divide up the sections. Now I'm sure if I haven't already gotten these questions during our Zoom meeting, I'll just go ahead and re-answer it now. Ms. Fisher, how many objects do I need on here? Um, well, I have one, two, three, four, five. So uh, five minimum. If you want more, great, but five, please fill in the area. Don't do these tiny things in the middle that, ugh, don't do it. So once all of this is filled out, you have all the areas divided out. This is where you need to have a decision on your inoculus colors. Again, there are examples on the objective sheet, but if you get stuck, look at your color wheels or you can easily Google color wheel or inoculus colors. Use Google guys, it is your friend. Um, so for example, I have my watercolors here. And because I have these sections in here, I am probably gonna stick with, hmm, let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, maybe two or three sets, okay. So when I say two or three sets, I mean like, okay, I'm gonna probably stick with these guys here, this and this. So that's green through violet, yellow through blue, red through yellow. Those are my three sets. If you want to stick with two sets, meaning warm tone, cool tone, fine, do it. But once your area is finally divided out, what you need to do, just like your semi project, is you need to make a decision on where each of these are going to go. Okay, so uh, since I have three sets, I'm just going to say one, two, and three whenever I actually kind of write it out on here and stuff. So let me think. We're just going to do one, two, three. Okay. I'll do two here. I'll do one here. So since all the bottom now is filled out, I'll come up here. I'll do another one here. And then I'll put, I'll put three. I'll put two another one one two three four okay so let's do three over here let's do two one i don't know two cool that was easy so i'll kind of get this closer so you can see it again i went through i had three sets of inoculus colors i'm going to work with so i just lightly wrote in the numbers of each section so that way it's okay if like three is here and three is here because they meet at the corner but you don't want to have like three and three, or, you know, one and one. You wanna kind of offset each of these things, okay? So now that this has been mapped out, everything's been divided, we figured out our colors and stuff, what you're gonna do is exactly like you did your semi-project. You're going to fill in the sections at a time, and you want to make sure your objects, your still life objects that you drew are three-dimensional. So if it makes your life easier in the beginning to say, hey, before I start painting, I need to know where is my light source. Again, the light source is direct sunlight or, I don't know, lights above you or something on an object. So as an example, I will grab my black paint bottle. So in this case, as I kind of hold it like this on purpose, I have my light directly above me. And as you can see where the highlights are, like the white that you're seeing here, that is direct contact on the object from the light source. Below it, you can see that you have several different versions of your shadow, but the actual darkest shadow is where the object physically touches the paper or the surface below. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. So if it means, okay, I need to mark somewhere on my paper light source, which I guess will kind of come from this direction. In my corner, I'll make like a little circle and I'll put in the letters L, S, meaning light source. So you're curious as what on earth I'm talking about. I'm talking about like right there. You'll still color like color or paint over it later, but this way if you're curious like where is it, mark it. If you don't need to mark it, fine. But for people who struggle with this, please mark it. So I've got my watercolors, I have my paintbrush, my water cup, all that fun fun stuff. And what I would suggest is the easiest for this project because this is a two week project, guys. Use your time wisely. What I find is the easiest is doing one section at a time. What that means is since I have three sets of innocuous colors I'm gonna be working with, I am purposely going to be doing all of the sections that are marked as one. 
Then when I'm done with that, I can work on all the sections marked as two and then sections marked with three. Once all of those are filled out and they've dried, then I can go back and kind of add in a little bit more details, things to make sure the objects look three-dimensional. So just to make our lives a little easier, what I'm gonna go ahead and do real quick, let's get a little bit of this mixed up. Okay. I'm gonna get my colors wet and I'm going to do one section at a time. So I'm gonna use my red. And just fill in the area. Now, if it's a blank space and there is no object around it and stuff, you don't have to have the color be super dark. You can have it be a little bit lighter. So if you feel like, oh, that's a little too dark, whatever, just go back with some water and just move the paint around. That's the nice thing about watercolor versus acrylic is you can manipulate it a little bit easier. All right. There we go, like that. And again, it's okay if it overlaps a little bit. It's not the end of the world. Remember to clean your brushes in between each coloring and stuff. If you want to blend some of your stuff, so I've got my red, I could easily blend in some orange, yellow if I wanted to. It's not a big deal. But remember from your skill builders and your semi project, don't want to do too, too much water because as you know, with your brush going back and forth, when you're going layers, it can easily rehydrate the paint and basically scratch away all the paint that you had and then you get some weird white spots. So take some time with it. What I'm gonna do for the sake of time is I am gonna go through and pause the video. I'm gonna do section one and then I'll unpause, show you what that looks like. I'll start section two, pause it, finish it, show that. Same thing with section threes, I'll pause it, fill it out and that way you can see what does this look like when I'm done. So give me just a sec and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm not quite done, but I did want to jump in and show you this real quick. When you're doing each section at a time, meaning section ones, what I am doing to make my life just a little bit easier is I'm going through and to make sure my objects look more three-dimensional, I am taking time to purposely fill in all the background area. So since I'm doing red as my background for section one, which I'll come back and add, you know, orange, yellow, all that stuff, I wanted to make sure I had a consistency with my background before I started on the objects, which is in those sections. So um, please use this method if it makes it easier for you. If you have your own method that you think works, go for it. But I figure I would just chime in real fast and just kind of show you, hey, here's a slightly easier way to do this, okay? So I'm gonna finish out section one and that way you can see what does that look like. All right, so a couple things I'll point out on here. I got most of what I wanted done. It doesn't mean that it's completely done because I am gonna go back and do my shadows later with these objects, but it is still a little wet, so I'm gonna be careful as I'm tilting it upward. Uh, what I did first, like I said earlier, I went in and did the background of all the areas that I was doing for section one, and I didn't wanna do this corner quite yet because it's a little close to section two and stuff. So I'm gonna come back and do this in a little bit for this. Uh, I was not paying attention at some point <laughs> and started painting in this section. So I made a mistake, it's watercolor. I you know, pulled off a little bit of my paper towel, soaked up what I could. I can easily fix it, it's not the end of the world for me. But I did wanna point out, yeah, I wasn't paying attention, totally made a mistake. So anyway, I got my objects filled, I'm gonna let them dry, but I wanted to show you what we have so far. It's okay if I went back and already did like a little bit of shading inside the objects, but I didn't wanna do like the full shadow below my objects until all my sections have been filled out. And the reason for that is because kind of if you did your uh, semi project, some of you may have struggled with doing that shadow in one section and then it was kind of a little lopsided in the next section and then the same thing in each of those. So to make your lives easier, worry about the background, work on the objects to make sure they're more three-dimensional. Then after everything is filled in, only then would I would suggest go back and figure out your shadows with your light source, okay? So I'm gonna work on section two, which I have one, two, three, <laughs> four, five. I have five 
parts of section two. And for section two, I'm gonna be doing yellow through blue. Not sure how I'm gonna fix this mistake, but I'll figure it out. So I'm gonna pause this one more time, fill in those sections. I might jump in a couple times and say, hey, these are things I did, these are things I learned, those kind of things. But this way we can do one part at a time and it starts to come together. All right, give me just a sec. All right, so I got all the section two parts mostly done. And let me kind of flip this around so I can show you. So I did my background light green um, anywhere that I had my lighter because I was still using yellow in my second part. Um, I went back with a little bit of light watered down green to overlap on here. And this way it's not yellow next to yellow because that's very confusing, but there is more yellow tones just with a hint of green. So same thing on here. I did this with paper towels and stuff. Uh, candle, I used a lot more blue on bottles and stuff, like the wallet down here. And I still used hints of yellow in little parts, but that's okay. So you're starting to see how the objects are still there. And I, like I said, I did the same shadowing and stuff inside the object, not so much outside the object yet. So we still have a few areas we need to complete before we can do that. So last thing I need to do is section three, which you know, ironically enough, there's literally only three parts left. So on here, I just want to show you real quick on um, the section one, I did red through yellow, section two, yellow through blue, and then for section three, green through violet. So that is what I'm going to work on next. And that way, once all of these are filled out, everything's more or less dry, then we can start working on the serious shadows of our objects. So I'm going to pause this one more time, and then I think we're pretty much halfway there, if not maybe three-fourths, if anything. Give me just a sec. All right, so I got majority of the third section done, and as you can see, we still have our objects, although they are a bit weird looking. I'm not going to, you know, lie about that one. So now that everything is filled out, like our background, we have our objects, we need to figure out our shadows. So as we did earlier, you had like a little symbol up here or wherever you decided to do this to show your light source. So now that we know where our light source is, this might be a little bit easier if you want to take a pencil once everything is fully dry. And this way you can figure out where are your shadows. So if it's a little bit easier, I'm going to work with the wallet first. If my light source is coming down from here, as you can see, I had most of this area lighter, except for the little badge part. We had dark in each of the sections. And we have this shadow that was consistent through each of the sections that we have. But I still need to have a shadow. So most likely what I'm going to do is just kind of lightly sketch out where my shadow most likely is going to be based off my light source. Once I have my wallet done, now I'm going to move on to another area. So I have my cube here. So let's see. Most likely I'm going to have my shadow in this section. And if it's easier to have the physical object in front of you so you can see, hey, where are my shadows? Do it. It makes life easier, guys. I'm going to do the bottle next. I'm going to say my shadows kind of direct right here. So again, I'm penciling this out to make it a little easier for you guys to see this. Same with the candle. I'm going to have my shadow come across here. And my paper towels, I might have just like a little bit of a shadow sticking out between this box ornament and the paper towels. So I'm gonna flip this around so I can see it and see if I like everything. This looks good, that looks good. This might need a little work on my cube. I feel like maybe it should come out a little bit more truthfully like that. This looks fine. Bottle, that's eh, all right. All right, so I like where my shadows originate from. So now what I'm gonna do is take some time and fill in each area. So. If my background on this one is, oops, green. Apparently I still have purple on that one, darn it. I will just go in, grab a little bit more green, and I'll just fill in a darker layer on top over here and try to keep that shadow consistent. Same in this area. I'm gonna go in, fill it in like that. I don't think there's any other shadows. Oh, there's a little bit right there. Cool. All right, got 
that done. What I would suggest as always, give time for your paper to dry because if you don't, it's gonna get a little messy. I was doing this pretty quick, so some of my sections kind of bleeded into other areas, but it's fine. So I'm gonna go in, grab my blue. Go here. There. It looks good. A few little tricks that I've been doing. If I find areas that are a little too wet and need to be absorbed and my paintbrush is not helping, if you just take a little bit of your paper towel and you would just absorb a little bit of that paint, it really, really makes your life a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and grab a little bit more blue right here to continue with that shadow in the bottle. Make sure everything gets nice and smooth. Again, if you need to use the paper towel to help absorb a part of your area so it's a little bit lighter, do it. I'm gonna come in and just make a little bit darker shadow right in there. Okay, looks good. So now I can switch over to my red. Get that taken care of. Okay, and I think I'm gonna work over here on this tiny little area. And the reason I make it really, really dark is because I'm using very little water. It's still pretty wet, but I mean, I'm using less water, so it's more solid whenever I go in and do this. Follow the same shape as shadow is going. I'm gonna be trying to be really careful about getting too close to that blue because it's still wet and I don't want it to bleed too much into the red, go back, go back up to my wallet. Okay, so let's kind of show what we have so far. So now we have a little bit more dimension once we have those shadows in here. Again, I would highly, highly suggest that you let things dry, take your time. You've got two weeks to work on this, so. Um, use the tips and tricks that I use. Remember to label, keep in mind, you know, what colors you're planning to use. If you don't want to use three sets like I did, I made mine super complicated, so just keep that in mind. Then, you know, do two sets. I'm fine with it. Do warm, do the cool colors. It makes it a little bit more obvious of each section. Um, I do want to point out there were areas I purposely left white because, well, I mean, I just did because I think that if I had everything too much color, white was needed. So I was okay keeping these areas. Maybe there's a few areas I could have done and left a little bit more white or something that could have been fine. But overall, considering how quickly I did this, not bad. Most likely I'll go back and kind of do a shadow right here. I'm just going to do it right now so you can see exactly what I'm talking about on the paper towel holder. I'm just going to go back, grab some of that paint, and just continue that shadow right here off before I put it in the green. Get a little bit of that green. And again, I'm going to follow the shadow from the other sections to keep it consistent. And this is what's going to give you that nice three-dimensional look. But even though it's changing colors, it'll be nice and So now we have our shadow on here. Again, we have our shadows from our light source up here. If you wanna go back and add a few more details, I highly suggest it. But again, if you find it's easier to just do two, do two. So obviously if you have questions, ask me through our Zoom meetings, ask me on Schoology, email me directly, whatever it is that you need to do guys. But again, this is a two week project use your time wisely. If that means 
one day I'm going to work on my project for 10 minutes. The next day I'm going to work on it for 20 minutes. The next day I'm going to do just five minutes. I don't care. You figure it out. Use your time management wisely. But if you get stuck, please do not wait until the last minute. Please get a hold of me sooner than later so that I can help with whatever it is that you're needing assistance with. Because this is not a very easy project. And I'm not gonna lie, I was really pushing myself. I was doing it fast, but maybe if I had spent more time and I go back and do more details, this thing would look better in my opinion. <laughs> so as always, I look forward to seeing you next time, guys. And I hope you have a great winter break after this is done. And I'll see you on the next Zoom meeting. All right, talk to you later. Bye.